Single pilot IFR, probably the highest workload that any pilot can have. This was a IFR flight. The ceilings at the airport were approximately 1,400 feet AGL. And something to note also is because it's along the Pacific coast, common in this area is a marine layer that can come in with ceilings that can be somewhat lower. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about spatial disorientation as, as being a, probably the probable cause or the probable scenario for this accident with a contributing factor of DMMS. Dan Greider has really been pushing this with his AQP, uh, which is an advanced qualification program that he's trying to, to implement for GA air aircraft. Now, DMMS is a defined minimum maneuvering speed. You're going to see in this video, her track and climb out is right at DMMS. Mm -hmm. Now, that's fine if you're going straight. But as soon as you get a call from ATC for a heading change and still climbing and still at a very relatively slow speed, the potential to get into a stall spin scenario mm -hmm. is high. And as, as we go through this, I, I, I think you'll probably agree that is the most likely scenario and the contributing factor of her speed as well. November 157, Romeo Charlie, piloted by Deborah Nicholson. Let's look at what happened and see if you reach the same conclusions. The pilot filed an IFR flight plan from Santa Barbara, California to Truckee, California, approximately 300 miles to the north. Santa Barbara clearance delivery, Cessna 157, Romeo Charlie. Cessna 157, Romeo Charlie, Santa Barbara clearance, good morning. Good morning, I have information, Oscar. I pre-filed an IFR flight plan to Truckee, uh, departing for a 7 o'clock departure. I'd like to pick that up. November 7, Romeo Charlie, clear to the Truckee Airport, depart runway 15. On departure, fly runway heading. Radar vector is Gaviota, as filed. Climb maintain 3,000, expect 10,000, 10, 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 125.4, squawk 7204. 157, Romeo Charlie, I'm clear to the Truckee Airport, departing runway 15, and I didn't get whether that was right or left. Uh, I fly runway heading. It'll be radar vectors to Gaviota. 3,000. Expect 10,000. 10 minutes after departure. 125.4 and squawk 7204. Number 7, Romeo Charlie, read back correct. To the left or right will be assigned by ground control based on where you're parked. Oh, 157, Romeo Charlie. I'm parked at Signature. Roger, you can expect runway 15 left. 157, Romeo Charlie. I'll expect 15 left. Santa Barbara Ground, Cessna 157, Romeo Charlie, I'm ready to taxi for departure. I'm at Signature. Cessna 157, Romeo Charlie, Santa Barbara Ground, who runway 15 left, taxi via Charlie. Runway 15 left, taxi via Charlie, 157, Romeo Charlie. Cessna 157, Romeo Charlie, Santa Barbara Tower, standby, waiting okay. after release. Cessna 7, Romeo Charlie, wind is 030 at 4, runway 15 left, clear for takeoff. Wait, one side left, clear for takeoff, one side seven, Romeo Charlie. At this point, the aircraft is beginning to enter into IMC. The ceiling's out over the water at 900 feet, which is quite a bit less than the 1,400 feet over the airport environment. 7 Romeo Charlie, contact departure, good day. Contacting departure, thank you, 157 Romeo Charlie. Departure, Cessna 157 Romeo Charlie. Heading, uh, departed runway 15 left. Contact, good morning, I maintain 8,000, stay altitude. 
1,000, uh, 1, 1,000, and climb and maintain 8,000. 1, 7, Romeo. Okay, 7, Romeo, Charlie, just verify your at uh, 1,200 at this time. 1,200. November 7, Romeo, Charlie, Roger. Thank you. Turn right heading uh, 255 and continue climb and maintain 8,000. I'm heading 255, 1, 7, Romeo. At this point, the aircraft has shot past its assigned heading by 30 degrees. This is where the aircraft appears to be entering a stall spin attitude. A few moments later, the aircraft is now descending at 5,000 feet per minute. At this point, approximately 575 feet above the water, the aircraft reaches a descent rate of over 9,000 feet per minute. From the time it took the aircraft to receive clearance for takeoff to the point of impact was a little over two and a half minutes. Radio and radar contact was lost and an alert notification was issued by the FAA. Cessna 7, Romeo Charlie, Santa Barbara approach. Cessna 157, Romeo Charlie, Santa Barbara approach, how do you hear? Uh, 157, Romeo Charlie, Santa Barbara approach, how do you hear? Cessna 157, Romeo Charlie, Santa Barbara Approach, how do you hear? Cessna 157, Romeo Charlie, Santa Barbara Approach, this is my fifth time reaching out to you, how do you hear? Cessna 157, Romeo Charlie, Santa Barbara Approach, radar contact lost. This incident most likely was caused by AQP number one, spatial disorientation during the day with a contributing factor of AQP number 12, loss of speed awareness, or in this case, DMMS during climb out. This is why I mention AQP number 12, loss of speed awareness, or possibly DMMS, as a possible contributing factor. As you see, the winds were coming out at 030 at four knots, so we basically had a two to four knot tailwind on takeoff and climb out. So the speeds you see here are in ground speed, not air speed. So you could basically deduct two to four knots off of the speeds pictured in this call out. Now, that is right at or below the DMMS speed of a Cessna 182T model at 72 knots. So how do we determine DMMS for your aircraft? So if you take the stall speed in the clean configuration, flaps up, in this case a Cessna 182T model is 51 knots. Multiply that times 1.404 and we get 71.604 knots. And I just round that up to an even 72 knots. It's easier to see on your airspeed indicator or your tape in a G1000. So that is the speed you need to stay at or above while maneuvering. DMMS is the defined minimum maneuvering speed. The aircraft was last seen Sunday morning September 27th, search and rescue efforts were halted after they found a debris field and a sheen reported in the vicinity of the downed aircraft approximately two miles off the coast of the Santa Barbara airport. So the search and rescue effort has now turned into a recovery effort led by the dive team of the United States Coast Guard. The wreckage and the remains of the pilot were located in approximately 200 feet of water. One pilot lost, one too many. Yeah. Deborah Nicholson, our condolences go to her family and all those who loved her. She, had, she was surrounded by a great family and group of friends that all missed her. And um, hopefully we can make some progress in trying to Reduce. Reduce the number of accidents. Her memory would be well served if one pilot may learn from this accident 
this incident and a tragic loss of life that will save a life in the future.